Satsang 90 Brahman is reality. 24th October 1935 Evening Satsang Krishna said, I fulfill all the desires of those who take total refuge in me. The four goals of religion, financial achievement, fulfillment of desires, and liberation are such that tremendous efforts are necessary to attain them, but still they are not attained. Even a shadow of liberation cannot be seen. Liberation is the conviction in the saying that I have gone beyond all karma. I have no need of anything. I have complete peace in myself. However, my devotees, those who have the understanding that they are Brahman themselves, gain all of the four goals, and the host of gods come to obey them. The host of gods symbolize the highest virtues and the good qualities of human beings, which naturally contain spiritual powers in them. My devotees are the embodiments of gods. This is achieved only by one who surrenders to me. One surrenders to that which he likes. Some are slaves to worldly life, and some come to me. I am the fulfillment of desire, the liberation, in fact, everything, to those who surrender themselves to me. Those who are not my devotees have attachment to pleasures and sense objects and get rebirth. However, for my devotees, I give them liberation even though they enjoy the things in the world. I give my devotee whatever is his wish and also free him from bondage. Dear Uddhava, all of the four aims of your life are not separate. I am all of those for you. So saying, Krishna forgot his identity as Krishna, and Uddhava forgot that he was Uddhava. It was quite a different kind of embrace. Both became the life energy itself and the objective in their mind to teach and to learn disappeared. God and the devotee became one. The sense of duality as the teacher and disciple was gone and all sense of duties and performance of actions were lost. The sense of both separateness and non-separation were gone. Understanding was gone upon gaining conviction. It is illusion to feel that I have become Brahman, Param Atman. When was there such a time when you were not Para Brahman? So why do you say, now I remain in that state? It is not a new state achieved by you. The fact is that you are already Brahman, absolute pure consciousness. You may say, by your teaching the illusion is gone, but how to remain in the state of Brahman? You cannot cleverly think of some measures to be taken in order to remain or continue in that state. 
You are naturally that. You have nothing to do to be constantly there. There is no becoming or not becoming. It is to be as you are. There is neither becoming nor non-becoming. For what is there to become? How are you to become? There is no becoming truth. If you become, then it is not true. Therefore, it is not that you have to become Brahman. It is already so. When the state of the self was already with us, some delusion affected us. What happened was only illusion. And even if anything does happen, or you experience that you became something, it is only illusion. If there is a certain notion that you have direct realization of Brahman, it is only the delusion of a confused mind. This confusion is the only the enhancement of illusion. It is the spectacle, the festival of illusion. Every so-called realization of Brahman is illusion. Brahman does not come into existence and does not end. It is always as it is in its pristine being. It is that which is not possible to be experienced separately, and it cannot be avoided. It is always in the present as reality. Having left all other efforts, the one who surrenders to Atman without any desire for anything has what is called total surrender. The one who is undivided in his faith has what is called undivided devotion. Only such a one is the faithful devotee. I give him unity with me. I fulfill all of his four aims of religion, money, desire, and liberation. That liberation is not relative freedom, but total freedom. Such a one is a non-doer, although he may be performing his ordained duties in the social structure. I make him desireless in this way. I give him such understanding from the inside, and I give him my sixfold riches. All of the four kinds of liberation are at his feet. One who knows that he is the self, Atman, has planted the tree of freedom in his courtyard. Lucky is he who plants such a tree. Lord Krishna fulfills the desires of his devotee and gives them the state of selfhood. As Lord Krishna says, one who leaves all efforts aside and surrenders himself to me is given all that he aspires for and I liberate him. The day a man takes refuge at the feet of the Guru, that is the day that his downward fall stops. I cannot tolerate even a little suffering of my devotee. Therefore, I give myself over to him completely. I am the protector of my devotee. His suffering is tantamount to my suffering. He is not separate from me. 
Let my devotee look at any person with blissful thoughts, and I emancipate that person as well. How can my devotee suffer any fall? I cannot tolerate even the words that my devotee has suffered. As I am his protector, I see that he has no wants. He never fails to see me, Atman, in its own state. Whatever may be the state of my devotee, I emancipate him. Those who are devoted to me by leaving aside the objects of pleasure of the body, speech, and mind in the material world are well cared for by me. What does it mean to leave aside the body, speech, and mind? It means that even if nothing good or pleasing happens to the mind, the devotee has only one desire. And that if all of the things that are happening are opposite to his liking, his faith in the Almighty is not disturbed. I consider only one such as this to have given up his body, speech, and mind to me. Such is the greatness of undivided devotion.